Hey, welcome back to KM6LYW Radio, the show about amateur radio or ham radio, reimagining radio in the information age. Hey, today I start, thought I'd start a, a series of segments on handmade or homemade equipment. Um, now I wanted to start with a, a simple quarter wave ground plane that you can make out of stuff you probably already have that works with your signal stick from Signal Stuff. In fact, we're going to call it a signal skirt, this time on KM6LYW Radio. All right, there it is. <laughs> Welcome back. It's free bumper music. Uh, too much Led Zeppelin is almost enough. Okay, this is my situation, guys. It's getting to be backpacking season, and this is Desolation Wilderness. It's literally almost 100 miles from anything over 8,000 feet, 2,500 meters. There is no communication whatsoever here, no cell or mobile data, nothing. So what we, what most of us bring is some sort of amateur radio or ham radio device. This is a little Yesu HT. Um, yeah, you get a, maybe an, a quarter wave antenna for this thing. Um, this is a signal stick from Signal Stuff. Great stuff. Um, nickel titanium, you know, you can coil this up, put it in your pocket, and when you need it, you got a quarter wave antenna for your HT. Pretty cool signal stick, but I need a little more gain than that from time to time because... Uh, I'm power limited too, so I can sometimes I'll have to drop the power on this down to two and a half watts. That's half power. So what I really need to do is make up that gain with some sort of boost to the venerable signal stick. Um, a lot of times uh, I'll use a counterpoise. This works really well. It turns a quarter uh, end fed quarter wave into a center fed half wave. That's kind of cool. Um, that's one way to do it. And then I thought, well, maybe I could improve on that a little bit and just experiment uh, with the SWR meter and power meter. You know, maybe you've got a bottle cap from a water bottle. Uh, maybe you've got some SMA adapters, like a barrel adapter, and you can put these together with some wire and come up with a kind of a really cool counterpoise. In fact, we'll call it a quarter wave ground plane, and we'll use a bulkhead SMA connector in the center and a washer, and we're just gonna solder some 20 inch legs onto this and see if we can get some more gain using a ground plane. Now, so in theory, you should be able to go from uh, like a plus 3 dB gain, whatever dBs are. But anyways, think of 3 dB as like doubling your effective uh, radiated power. Uh, so let's see if we can kick up the gain here. So we're going to take this ground plane that we're going to make here, hook it up to some coax, and maybe, and then hook this up to a signal stick. Maybe we're going to put it on the tent. Maybe we're going to raise it into a tree. Um, whatever you want, really. Um, and just to get some more gain um, so I can operate at low power doing email, SMS, and texting, and all my APRS packet operations on my radio using that antenna. So um, this is an example like of a campsite. Um, this is like where we might be camping. And keep in mind, we are surrounded by granite walls a lot of the time. There's a lot of metal in these, so it is hard to get out. So. I decided to experiment. I'm going to take this radio, and this is kind of a, an image of, of how it works here. We've got the HT, we've got a little bit of feed line, we've got a ground plane adapter, and then we've got our signal stick. Now this radio doesn't have cat control, so I added that up here. Um, I don't know how, how the cat's controlling, but we have cat control um, on this. And then, you know, we can use a DigiPi and a mobile link TNC um, that will allow us to tether that to our phone so we can do texting with this setup right here. The cat doesn't come with me. Um, so ideally, we want a uh, we want 50 R's and zero X's, right? That's zero ohms of characteristic feed point impedance. It's hard to say. And then we want no reactance. That's what this X is. And then we want one point one to one SWR ratio. Now that's ideal. That means all power is being radiated. Now, in what direction? I don't know. Ideally, towards the horizon. So that's kind of where the, the quarter wave ground plane comes in. It helps redirect the effective radiated power uh, in a more of a flat plane rather than just a ball, which is what you'd normally get with a center fed half wave, which is what we have with the signal stick and the counterpoise. So here we are at the testing grounds. Here's a, here's a little quarter wave ground plane that we made out of, essentially made out of garbage bottle caps and stuff. And sure enough, I can get... Uh, I can get one-to-one -one SWR with this setup, and it's really about trimming those radials. This is a three radial system. Um, these little bulkhead connectors, they're a little longer than a typical female SMA adapter, so get a bulkhead version of this adapter. Uh, that way you can add these washers and nuts and actually solder the, these uh, counterpoise or radial wires up to the washer itself, and then just kind of crank them on with a bolt. 
Um, you get some heat shrink tubing on there for stress release, obviously. You can see it's coming together here. We've got the bottle cap, some, some uh, ray heels, some heat shrink. Stick that on there. And you notice when we put this nut on here, we have just enough space to screw on our radiating element. Now this just could be your HT uh, and rubber duck antenna too, but you know, in this case we're going to use a signal stick because we need the gain because we're in the middle of nowhere. Uh, so this is it coming along here with a, uh, a little bit of coax coming out of there. Well, we've got a big old choke here to handle any common mode currents that go down that coax. This is sensitive to that. I noticed um, I couldn't get the SWR all the way down to one-on-one -on -one unless I added this clip-on choke. And I'll be honest, this is half of the weight of this antenna system is that choke because it's a ferrite bead, right? So I would love to get rid of that. I thought about maybe coiling some coax around a nail or something, but you know, there's so much loss in these uh, ultralight coaxes. I don't, I don't know if it would be better or worse, but it was hot with RF. And the reason you, how you can tell is you can wiggle your coax around. And if your SWR changes, that means you've got common mode currents uh, on your coax and it's becoming part of the antenna system, which isn't what you want. Uh, so this is it here assembled. We've got a coax, a ferrite bead. We've got a couple of water bottle caps. We've got our signal stick and three radials. And this actually worked really well. In fact, you can lash this to the top of your tent so you can do radio operations in your tent outside away from all the bugs and mosquitoes because that's how it was before. You know, I'd want to text the XYL at sunset and the mosquitoes were crazy. So with this system, I could actually text from within a tent. Um, I tried actually using these aluminum poles as a ground plane. It didn't work out very well. I don't know, maybe they're just the wrong length or something, I don't know. So this is it just lashed with some shock cord. Hey, if you're backpacking, bring a lot of shock cord. Um, it's kind of a poor man's, it's a backpacker's duct tape, shock cord. So this is it here, and, and this actually worked really well. Uh, trim, when you're trimming these uh, for one-to-one -one SWR, make sure it's about the right height and in the position you're normally going to be using this antenna, and, and it worked out really well. So the, the three conductor thing was good, so I, fig so I figured maybe four conductor uh, radials uh, would be even better. So I, I embarked on a, on a new device here. So here we are with four radials coming off of a little lock washer for our SMA connector. And uh, also use, use that soldering iron tip that you don't care about and just stab that bottle cap right in the center and uh, it'll actually melt the plastic and reinforce this area, make it a little bit stronger there. So, so again, plastic's not good for soldering tips. Um, you won't be able to wet your tip after you do this, but um, it sure makes a nice uh, solid hole that perfectly fits an SMA adapter. Um, then you're going to want to drill some holes for your radials and then uh, insert your radials and then uh, take your bulkhead connector and jam it in there. Hey, one thing I noticed when all of these radials were really dangling down, um, the SWR went a little nuts because as these get closer to each other and closer to the feed line, uh, you get a lot of reactants. So ideally, these should be about 120 degrees down from vertical. Um, do that however you want. The whole wire doesn't have to be, you know, it could just be this first little bit that's 120 degrees down and then let it dangle. So what I found, just put some sticks on here and actually the SWR came right in line here. It gave me a little more of a ground plane rather than a dangle plane. I don't know, a little better, <laughs> better angle. This actually brought me down to one, dot, one to one SWR. Hey, as far as the dB to grams ratio, that's a new unit here. We got decibels or gain to grams, gain to grams, um, because everything counts when you're backpacking. This whole setup here with the, the, the three radials in this case, a bottle cap and a uh, this little barrel connector, um, bulkhead connector, this is 11 grams, okay? This is really that simple. In fact, this is the actual bulkhead connector. You can see how long it is. And it comes with this extra hardware, which is what you need for the ground plane. Um, the Sharpie is there for scale. Oh, and this has a little uh, O-ring in it too. How cool is that? And, and it's actually a waterproof scenario, right? In case it starts raining up there. Um, so this is the bulkhead version. And did I get that right? Yeah. And so this is it lashed to the tent. Um, your radials, I would start, I would cut them at about 21 and a half inches and then roll back each of your radials until you get, uh, and, and test them one at a time on your antenna system, like kind of as a counterpoise, until you get one-to-one -one SW, SWR, because they will interact with each other. It's good to have some rollback here. Don't just trim them off. What I've found is if you have some rollback on your uh, on your radials, you get a little more capacity. What is capacity? Capacity is lower Q value. <laughs> What is Q value? It just means you have a wider area of low SWR, so you can get the whole band in there if you have a little rollback 
on these things. Your antenna system likes that. And of course, there's not that much of a weight penalty there. Um, so this is that system on the tent here. And I, I'm actually liking the three radial system. It's just less complex. Um, I think we're getting gain in all directions here. Um, fits on the tent really well. And, you know, I can run this RG174. Um, so I know I, when I did an HT antenna shootout, I told you guys to never Ever, under any circumstance, use this really thin RG, I think it's 174. It's really thin. There's so much loss at the higher frequencies in this stuff. It's almost not usable. So, but if you're just going from the top of a tent to the inside of a tent, you know, six feet is going to cost you about one dB. And like we said, three dB is half your signal. So that's 30% of your signal vaporizing or turning into heat into your coax. But in this case, I think the, the penalty uh, or the benefits outweigh the penalty here because this is really light. This is just a few, I don't know, maybe, well, we looked at the weight there. Um, but you get so much more gain out of this antenna with the radials than you would with just a uh, something sticking up in the air. Like you're getting like plus 3 dB gain in theory by adding this uh, quarter wave ground plane system to this antenna. And then you're losing one dB in your cable. So I don't know, the net plus two, that's pretty cool. That means I can operate this thing at low power because um, power, I have a power budget when I'm backpacking. Right? This is all solar based. So uh, plus two dB for this system with the coax and I can operate radio without mosquitoes. Worth it, priceless. Um, so here we are at 49 grams for the three radial version. That includes the coax and the ferrite bead. 49 grams ain't bad. That's 1.7 ounces for you imperialists out there. Uh, this is just for the coax and the ground plane. Now, if we add the signal stick, we are up to two ounces for this entire antenna system. I'll take it. Um, let's say uh, for you for you metric people, that's 57 grams. Um, I know the metric people are like, Europeans are like, yes, uh, imperialists are finally coming over the metric system. Hey, remember I talked about when the, uh, you know, having the uh, more of an 120 degree angle, if you got a paper plate, wow, this totally fixed that problem here. Uh, just a small paper plate, maybe a 10 inch paper plate and you're there. The only problem with this is, yeah, it's light, but it doesn't crush very well. And so if you're a backpacker, you know that everything you pack will in fact be crushed. Um, so that includes your antenna system and probably this paper plate. But this actually worked out pretty well. This got my SWR down to 101 with, with almost no weight penalty. So the paper plate, uh, radial system, bottle cap, I don't know, we need a better name for this. Uh, the signal stick skirt. All right, and you can see here we've got uh, one-to-one -one SWR. Um, this is the uh, a piece of coax with just the signal stick and no counterpoise whatsoever. Um, just in case you're wondering, this is like where you would start. And the SWR on this was off the hook at 11 to one. Um, it was all reactants, um, just, just a disaster. So if you try and put your HT antenna on a piece of coax and raise that up into a tree, ain't gonna work, okay? You gotta have some sort of counterpoise or ground radial system. Otherwise, you're, all of your your uh, power is going into heating that coax. It's just not radiating. Um, so, you know, the, the other gold standard, like I mentioned here at the beginning, is just to have a counterpoise on your antenna and coax. This is enough. Um, now, your, your pattern's gonna suck, okay? Your pattern's not gonna hit the horizon in all directions, but it is going to hit the horizon in the direction of this counterpoise. So if you're in a position where you know where your target radio is, like I know our APRS uh, uh, digipeter is in the wilderness here, I can actually aim this counterpoise at that digipeter and get a lot of gain, a lot of effective radiated power to that, uh, that horizon. Uh, but on the backside over here, it's just going to, a lot of it's going to go into space. A lot of power is just going to go into dirt. But this is probably the lightest solution. So I'm going to actually test these when I'm out there. I'm going to point this single radial system, um, quarter wave ground plane. It's not really a ground plane. It's a ground direction, quarter wave ground direction uh, with this guy and see if I can get the same amount of signal back uh, from that digipeter using only this. Because this really is the lightest and most simple and crushable most importantly, solution. Um, and of course, here we are, we are at 1.1 uh, SWR, 1.1 to 1 SWR with just that counterpoise. So just that counterpoise is pretty darn cool from a weight to benefit ratio, but it makes some assumptions. You gotta know where your target uh, transmitter or receiver is. I did a lot of other experimentation. I thought, hey, you know, if you can base load a, a, a radiating element or a transmitter then or a transmitting element, why can't you base load a, a radio as well? So I 
course, I got some springs out and put some little pigtails on there. What I was thinking, I was get I'd get radials maybe this long, you know, because this this is probably 14 inches, and then you add another six inches to get your 20 inches. Uh, it didn't work out in practice. I mean, this is and this isn't really crushable either. And I, you know, we're starting to add weight here. It's starting to get out of control off the rails, but I built this thing just for my own edification. Uh, this is what it looks like. The problem was the pigtails still had to be really long. So these little inductive coils, these base loaded uh, radials didn't allow me to remove uh, a lot of this extra wire here. Um, you know, initially I was thinking I have a, you know, a good plane um, that sticks out from the side because of the spring tension, but it just didn't work out that way. So I didn't like this one um, for, well, for a variety of reasons. So actually, I've, I've, I've gone back to this single radial guy here. I'm, I'm going to try this and my uh, my three radial ground plane when I go out next time. I'll see how that works. Um, of course, that's what it looks like dangling from the ceiling here. Um, so that is that was my experiments with trying to get more gain out of my signal stick, and I think we came up with something called the signal skirt, um, and we'll, we're going to see how that goes the next time we're in the mountains. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out with me. Let me know if you build a signal skirt or some sort of quarter wave ground plane or even just a center fed half wave system for your HT when you go on your next hike. So guys, thank you so much for, for the, the support here. Um, this is a big shout out to the patrons of the channel. Um, you know, anything helps, patreon.com slash km6lyw. Um, it gets you access to the Digipi SD card image, um, which will uh, basically influence every data mode that we talk about on this channel and allows you to control your radio using nothing more than your phone or Maybe more specifically a web browser, so you can do all your packet, TNC, all of JS8, call, FTA, all of that stuff uh, with your phone with the DigiPi SD card image in a Raspberry Pi connected to your radio. So patrons, thank you so much. Guys, let me know. Uh, I need a better scroller here still. Let me know if you build these or maybe you've got some better ideas. You know, this is probably about... It was totally cool. It's probably maybe eight hours of just dinking around with this, trying different uh, counterpoises or ground planes. Anyway, I could get more gain out of my signal stick here. Um, and uh, honestly, I think the three radial system on top of the tent is really what I'm going to use. And what will probably happen um, when I'm outside and there are no mosquitoes, I'm going to use this signal stick uh, from Signal Stuff. And I'm gonna, just going to use that with a, uh, a counterpoise, that single ground radial, and point that at my target radio and see what kind of gain I can get. Now, I use this just listening to uh, the repeater. Um, using just a counterpoise and the ground plane. And with the with both, I could get about plus two units, S units, um, using this system, uh, maybe three. So again, three S units doubles your, your signal. And that's not just for transmitting, but that's also for receiving. So I think it's worth it, guys, to come up with some sort of ground plane or counterpoise for your HT antenna system. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, my name is Craig, amateur radio call sign KM6LYW. I'm in California and I am clear.